Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Great Day Washington. Happy Friday. I'm Kristen Bursett Harris, joined with Mary Marshall and TV personality John Murray joining us this morning. Hey, good morning. Great to have you. Hey, listen, it's a great day in Washington. It absolutely is. Even better that you're here. Local guy, what you been up to? Listen, I've been working. I've been on the road, hosting a lot of events, moderating, uh, doing some pop-up shows, some cable news here and there. But I'm here with you guys today, so I'm looking forward to diving into the hot topics. Absolutely. This is what we do, our morning mix, right, Yes, Mary? We, we give our opinions. We give our opinions. We got some of the trending topics, so let's get to it. A Texas marketing company tried to shame an applicant because of a bikini photo on her social media account. Yep, now that company is getting blasted online, no surprise. Here's the photo they posted. You can't see her head, right? But it says, PSA, do not share your social media with a potential employer if this is the kind of content on it. I'm looking for a professional marketer, not a bikini model. <laughs> Go on with your bad self and do whatever in private, but this is not doing you any favors finding a professional job. The woman in the photo is Emily Clow. She's 24. She fired back saying she felt objectified and was baffled that a company would do this. A rep for the company says Emily wasn't disqualified and definitely not for her bikini photo. But of course, the company's website is dark and the Twitter account has been disabled. Hmm. Listen, I <laughs> Most, most people would believe that I actually would be in favor of the young lady, but I actually am I'm cool with what the company did. I think this is Employment 101 Masterclass. Everybody should understand at this point or another that if you really want to get a great job, particularly more serious jobs, uh, jobs in the government field, you know, DC's big on government, you've got to monitor your social media. You cannot have wild and reckless behavior on social media and think that you can then go play, uh, apply for a job right. where they're not going to look at that. Everybody's asking for social media handles on uh, job applications, on employment inquiries, yeah. and you've got to be cognizant of that when you're trying to get a good gig. But do you think that's wild and reckless behavior, though? I mean, I get that because I'm totally with you. I remember well, getting started the in the job, business. It depends on what the job was. I mean, if you're, yeah. uh, you know, if you're applying to be the head chaplain at a church, that might be <laughs> yeah, wild and reckless behavior. Work. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that won't get you in. I mean, listen. She I mean, you could be great... first lady of the United States. Did I say that out loud? Oops. <laughs> now, granted. <laughs> I'm moving on from that one. <laughs> Granted, the company did not put her head out there. Right, which was she great. She put it up herself saying, hey, this was me. Which is what I call me, 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 me culture. She wanted folks to know that it was her. So oh, you, yeah. you, you can't feel like you were being objectified when you signed up and raised your hand and said, this is me that you're looking at my body online. That's a good way to put it. Now, what do you think? I, I don't post bikini photos online. I, I just never have. Um, I feel like if you don't catch me on the beach, you're not going to see it on social. Um, so I'm, I under, I'm with you on that. But, you know, they, this was a good marketing ploy. They got a lot of attention. And that is why, you know, that works for them, but at her expense. But she did come forward and, and identify herself. So I can see your point there. I'm as sure well. she'll get a nice job out of it. And the company Somewhere. will kind of have to repair a little bit. And but maybe the cover of Maxim. <laughs> they need That's the cover of Max. You never <laughs> know. You never know. But a good PSA for all of us just to watch what we put on our social yeah. Yeah. overall. Okay, we got some celebrity beef this morning, right? Uh -oh. This time between actress Sarah Paulson and Le Lisa Vanderpump of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Paulson, who is a fan of the Housewives series, claimed to meet Vanderpump at a party, and she mentioned that she was, quote, not very nice when mm. they met. So yesterday, according to page six, Vanderpump clapped back saying she doesn't even recall meeting her. Oh, which is which is probably how dismissive she was to her when they had their real exactly. life encounter. <laughs> didn't even pay attention to her when she was there. I'd like to know, have you guys ever had a celebrity encounter that didn't go well? Yes. yes. <laughs> Please share. Did you want to go Please first? Share. Well, there have been a lot of great surprises on this show of people yes. that have gone above and beyond. Let's start with that. We both agree. Snoop Dogg was the amazing. Cool, one of the nicest guys you're going to ever amazing. meet. Amazing. John Travolta was amazing. He was. We didn't think that he was going to do a photo because I think his reps were saying, hey, he doesn't have time for photos. At the end, he gets up and says, hey, anybody yeah. want a photo to the whole audience? Yeah. Wow. Put one another coolest guy you'll ever meet. So there's more that surprise us than disappoint us. But I, would, I was working in Baltimore, and I was covering uh, Pam driver's celebrity tennis tournament and I grew up playing tennis so any female tennis player especially uh, Chris Everett I admired and she was not the friendliest uh -oh. to me as media and um, I was kind of disappointed in that I was just like I was so excited and I said I grew up admiring you I love you you know you're great and it was just kind of the same thing, kind of dismissive. Well, you finally served her back. I served her back. That's I, right. I'm doing just fine. I won't name names, but there was a football player uh, that played for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers that came here one time. I just loved him in his career. I so admired him. A great defensive player, but 
not the nicest off the field. I'm like, man. Yeah. So I was um, a little disappointed yeah, you by were, that. You, but you talked about that. I was. I was not happy about that. I don't like you, that. You'll have to tell me off air, but what I'm going to tell, you? tell you mine on air. Um, it was before I got into business. I was a college student at Norfolk State University. Shout out to anyone who went to HBCU. And uh, we took a class trip to New York City. And we were at Mercury Records, and they told us, we have a surprise for you. We're going to bring in one of the artists to surprise all the students. And it was about 25 of us in the room. So I went to the bathroom. And I was out there, and I saw Brian McKnight and his <gasps> manager arguing with the marketing director huh? about how he didn't want to meet those college what? kids. And so ultimately, he came in the room, and he was not pleasant. He likes, has, has a smug look on his face in the photo that we took with him. And when he left, my college professor, Dr. Brockington, turned to us and said, was it me, or did he not really want to be here? <laughs> and so that was my very first bad encounter with a celebrity. Yeah. I ultimately got flown, once I got into the business, I started working as an entertainment writer. I got flown to Paris to interview him. Oh, wow. And over lunch, I got to tell him about my bad Good encounter with him. Yeah. And he apologized. Oh. But just a few years ago, he was back here in DC doing a play. And uh, there was an autograph table, and I saw him be rude to his fans. Instead of him <laughs> being in line with all the other celebrities, he set his bodyguard at the autograph table. The bodyguard took the autographs and handed it back to him because he wanted no engagement with the people wow. that were there and paid tickets to see him perform. Well, wow. I always think when you get a bad celebrity or a celebrity that or somebody you look up to, whether it's an athlete, an actor, a musician, they're human too. They have bad days, but yeah. the apology. Well, Brian is having a couple great, bad years. But then now you've <laughs> yeah. got yeah. Yeah. When, it, when it repeats itself, it's obviously a, a pattern. And it's just easier to be nice. Will Smith was probably one of my best encounters ever. He was, at the time that I met him, he was the biggest grossing box office star in the world and the nicest guy you could ever meet. We literally sat at the valet at the Four Seasons Hotel in L.A. and had a conversation about being premature gray and what type yeah. of hair dye he used. So, I mean, like, <laughs> just a nice, use? accessible, yeah. regular he, guy. He seems very real. Absolutely. Very real. You're always nice, right? I Anybody try to be. you meet. I know. We all have our bad days. But yeah. people... You, if you catch me when I'm hangry, we yeah, don't have a problem. Yeah. Gotta be That's careful with that one. I'm good again, you know? <laughs> All right. Cheating can be a very painful ordeal, uh -oh. right? Anybody that's been cheated on in a relationship or work or anything. And if you steal someone's spouse, it could actually cost you big time. In North Carolina, a man won a $750,000 judgment against the man who stole his wife. Oh. The husband sued on the grounds of alienation of affection and a law that exists in only a handful of states. It's also referred to as the homewrecker law. <laughs> the man had been with his wife for 12 years. He hired a private investigator and found out that his wife was having an affair with a coworker. The husband says he thought the guy was a friend since they all had dinner together on a few occasions, but apparently not. Listen, if they had that law in D.C. or Los Angeles or California, <laughs> oh you could pay off the defi deficits in, 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 in most of uh, these towns. You right? know, um, and $750,000, that is not, that's the lower end. He can um, buy a new wife for that. There, I think the precedent was <laughs> I mean, hilarious. I didn't mean it that way. I'm so, that probably didn't come on. <laughs> Get one of those computer generated I'm wives. Saying, like that. But no, you know, the, I think the precedent, the top of the line in a lawsuit like this was like $3 million. Oh, wow. So, like, if you're going to wreck a home, you better make sure you know the laws of the, the state that you live mm -hmm. in because it might cost you really, it might be real expensive yes. to, to be a home wrecker. That's, I just, I never knew that law even existed. I mean, good for him for, for going after after it yeah. and kind of getting the revenge, I you say. Know, there's, there's a saying that says it's cheaper to keep her, but in this case, it's cheaper to cheat on her. I'm right. You know? <laughs> to some degree. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's just a crazy story. All yeah, right. The new is. AEW Wrestling League kicked off their first event that was broadcast live around the world. It was here in D.C. The league founders, Cody and Brandy Rhodes, stopped by Great Day Washington earlier in the week to promote the big event. Sold out in minutes after tickets were available. Now fans came from all over the nation to pack Capital One Arena. And one of those fans was you, John. Yes. It, was listen, it? I was in the house. It was really great to witness professional wrestling history. Um, and, um, you know, wrestling um, was probably at its peak in the late 90s, yeah. early 2000s, when they had what they called the Monday Night Wars. It was WWE versus WCW. And so what AEW is doing uh, as another big force in wrestling is, is creating that moment again. And, and what makes it special is they have so many celebrity attachments. So you had Cody here, who is the son of the legendary uh, late Dusty Rhodes. His mm -hmm. brother Dustin was there. His wife, uh, Brandi Rhodes, she was on the East show Wags Atlanta. Uh, you have Kia Simmons, who stars in the Netflix show Glow. 
Glow. She wrestles there as the wrestler Awesome Kong. They've got their first transgender wrestler, Nyla Rose. Um, they have their first openly gay wrestler, um, Sonny Kiss. Um, they're really taking bold moves with some former WWE guys, um, the former MMA fighter, Scorpio Sky, who's a buddy of mine. And it was amazing to be in that sold out arena. Uh, I was talking to people who had um, flown in from Chicago, drove wow. down from Philadelphia. People literally came in from all over the world to witness this iconic kickoff on TNT. Uh, AEW has a special product uh, with Dynamite, and I'm excited to see how they evolve and grow. Were you always a wrestling fan? Yeah, I grew up as a wrestling fan. Okay. Um, when I started, um, I did six years on the Tom Jordan Morning Show. Right. So I was nice. always on the road, and I kind of grew out of it for my, maybe about four years. But then WWE did a promotion with The View. And so uh, my friend Sherry Shepard went uh, to the ring with one of the wrestlers, MVP. And so he, him and I got to hang out. And so as a result of it, I got back, back into, into wrestling. It. And so watching what's happening with uh, AEW and everything else, it's a great time. I'm excited to be a fan, and I'm excited to see this company grow. It's always one of those that's like, I'm just never into wrestling. Uh -huh. But it is such a huge following, and I right? love that they're just constantly trying to change it up. Change Absolutely. it up. So, John, thanks so much for being Anytime. here. I know you're a super busy man, so Listen, we appreciate you coming in. It's been a great experience, because it's a great day in Washington. It's a great day it in really Washington, is. and it's going to continue right after the break.